Welcome to this episode on Mastering GRPC with Go. We'll explore how GRPC, a high-performance RPC framework, allows us to build scalable microservices and communicate seamlessly between services in Golang. GRPC stands for Google Remote Procedure Call. It's an open-source framework for building remote procedure calls across distributed systems. It leverages HTTP2 for transport, protocol buffers for message serialization, and supports multiple programming languages. Before diving into code, let's discuss why you'd choose gRPC over REST. gRPC uses HTTP2, while REST uses HTTP 1.11. HTTP2 offers better performance and reduced latency. gRPC uses protocol buffers, a binary serialization format, while REST typically uses JSON or XML, which are text-based formats. gRPC follows the remote procedure call paradigm, while REST adheres to the representational state transfer model. To get started, we need to install some dependencies. First, install the gRPC Go package. Then, we will install protobuf package. These commands set up your Go module and install the necessary gRPC and protocol buffers libraries. Next, we need to install the Go plugin for Protobuf by running these commands. This plugin will be used to generate Go code from our Protobuf definitions. This one will be used to generate code for gRPC call definitions in Protobuf. Now that we have our dependencies set up, let's look at the structure of the project we are going to build. We have different directories for the client for holding the protobuf definitions and for the server. Let's look at the proto file we have here. In this file we define messages and services. These are converted to the struct and methods when we compile it using protobuf compiler. The first thing you see here is the syntax declaration. We are using Proto3, which is the latest version of protocol buffers, a language-neutral, platform-neutral way to serialize structured data. This tells the compiler where the generated Go code should reside. After you generate the code, it will be placed in the Go gRPC slash proto package in our project. We also define a package. This ensures that when we generate the gRPC code, all our services and messages are grouped under this namespace, making it easier to organize and reference them. Now we get to the core of the gRPC definition, the service itself. Here, we're defining a service called person service. In our person service, we've defined four methods, create, read, update, and delete. Each method takes a specific request message and returns a response message. For the create RPC method, create person request defines the input. The create RPC method returns person profile response. Let's look at the request message, create person request. This request has three fields, name, email, and phone number, all of which are strings. The numbers 1, 2, and 3 represent field tags, which are used in the binary format of protocol buffers to identify fields. Similarly, the person profile response includes an extra field ID since we need to specify which person's data to update. For the read RPC method, single person request is the argument. For the read method, we only need a person's ID to identify the record, so the request message is very simple. For the delete method also, we only need the ID, so we use single person request as the parameter. Similarly, update person request is defined here. It also has four fields. For update and delete, the server responds with a success response. The success response contains a simple string field called response that will indicate whether the operation was successful. Once the proto file is ready, we use proto C, the protocol buffers compiler, to generate Go code from it.
This is the Protocol Buffers compiler. It's a tool provided that reads our .proto files and generates code. The GoOut flag tells the compiler to generate Go code and specifies where to place the generated files. The dot here indicates that we want to output the files right here in the current directory. This option controls how the paths for the generated files are handled. By setting paths as source relative, we're telling the compiler to maintain the relative directory structure of our proto files when generating Go files. Similarly, we have specified options for gRPC methods also. This will generate two Go files, one for the protobuf messages and one for the gRPC service interface. Let's look at the generated files. We will open this file first. It contains message definitions. Here is the create person request. This is the definition of single person request. Now, let's see what the RPC call methods look like. This is the service interface containing method definitions. This is the create RPC method. Similarly, the other methods are also declared here. Let's implement the server. We create the main file for the server. The package is main. Suppose we have an entity called person. This is the definition of the structure. We will be keeping a map of persons which we will use to demonstrate create, read, update and delete operations on a person resource. To keep track of persons, we maintain a map called persons that stores person objects, keyed by their unique ID. The key is of type 32-bit integer, and the value is of type person. We also use nextID to automatically assign a unique ID to each person when they are created. This is a simple in-memory data store, just for demonstration purposes. In real-world applications, this would be replaced by a database. Next, we define our server struct. This struct implements the methods defined in our gRPC service. Note that it embeds pb.unimplemented person service server, which is a helper provided by gRPC to ensure that we implement all required methods. We need to import the package. Let's do that. This method is defined in this file generated using protobuf compiler. Let's start with the create method. We will copy the function definition from here. This method belongs to the pointer to the server. Let's paste it here. This structure is in PB package. This too belongs to the same package. This method should take a create person request from the client, validate the fields and assign the new person an ID. Let's create a person object from the incoming request. We can fetch the name by calling the getName method. Person request has the following fields and corresponding get methods. Let's use these methods to get all the fields for the person. Now let's check if the user has provided all fields. If there is a missing field, We return an empty person profile response and an error. Next, we assign an ID to the person. Then, 
we store it in the person's map. And increment the next ID for the next person to come. Finally, we return the newly created person in the response. We fill all the fields from the person created here. To save time, we will paste the RPC read method. Here it retrieves the ID from the request. Then, we look up the person in the person's map. If the person is not found, it returns an error. Otherwise, it returns the person's profile. Similarly, we have implemented update and delete functions. Feel free to take a look at the code. Then comes the main function. It creates a TCP listener on port 8080 using net.listen. Here the error is handled. Then the function initializes a new gRPC server using new server function. In the next line, we register the person service with our server implementation. This function accepts service registrar, which we created in the previous line, and the person service server. Finally, it starts the gRPC server and logs that it's running. Now our server is ready. Let's implement the client now. We pasted the code here. We create a dial option slice opts, which allows us to customize how the client connects. With this line, we bypass SSL in this development environment. We call new client to connect to our gRPC server running at localhost 8080. If the connection fails, we log an error. Once done, we close the connection using DEFA. Now that we're connected to the server, we create a new client instance for our person service. This line creates the person service client, which allows us to make remote procedure calls, RPCs, to the server. Before making requests, we set up a context with a 15-second timeout. This ensures that our RPC calls will fail if they take too long. With timeout method, creates a context that will cancel itself after 15 seconds, preventing long-running RPC calls. We use defer cancel to ensure that the context is cleaned up when it's no longer needed. Let's start by creating a new person. We use the create method from our person service client to send a request with the person's details. We create a create person request with the person's name, email and phone number. We send this request using client.create. Here we pass the context and the create request. If there is an error, we print the error. If the call is successful, we print the details of the newly created person. Similarly, we have this code to read a person's details. We have also implemented update and delete gRPC API code. Let's run the code now. Here, we start the server. The server runs on port 8080. Let's run the client. This is the response to create call. Here, a person's details are read. 
a person's record is updated here. At last, we delete the person's record. In this video, we covered the basics of using gRPC with Go, from defining proto files generating Go code to implementing both server and client logic. Whether you're working on microservices or efficient APIs, gRPC is a powerful tool in your Go development toolkit. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out more tutorials on Mastering Golang.